All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. And today we are gonna be showcasing the new Dokkan Awakening for Int, Oceanus Shenron, of course, at 100% in the hidden potential system. Now, before we get into it, I do wanna quickly talk about her details. So if you guys already know what she does, then feel free to skip ahead maybe 30 seconds to a minute and we'll get into the gameplay. Okay, so first things first, her leader skill. It's Shadow Dragon Saga Category Key plus 3, HP, Attack, and Defense plus 120%. So, if you guys don't have the Fizz Omega Shenron and you still want to run the Shadow Dragon Saga team, then she's not a bad option as a leader. Although, it's still going to be almost impossible to find a friend lead because the friend system is mad broken. I mean, it's much better than it was when the game first came out, but it's still really, really bad. Anyways. Her super attack raises defense for one turn, causes supreme damage, and also seals the enemy. And her uh, passive is key plus 3, attack and defense plus 120%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 60%, and launches an additional super attack when the target enemy is in attack down or defense down status. And she also has attacks effective against all types and high chance of stunning the attacked enemy when the target enemy super attack. Is sealed. Okay, her links are Battlefield Diva, Metamorphosis, Cold Judgment, Shadow Dragons, Speedy Retribution, GT, and Shadowing the Limit. And she only has two categories at the moment Peppy Gals and Shadow Dragon Saga. So that's everything you gotta know about the Int Oceanus Shenron's Token Awakening. And we are running a Shadow Dragon Saga team because there weren't that many options. It was either this or Peppy Gals, and unfortunately, Peppy Gals does not have a proper leader, so at least with this team, it's 150% across the board. Okay, so she's linked up with the Tech Nova Shenron. We got the Omega debuffing the Krillin. So she's starting off with 123,420 defense, which is actually pretty good. I mean, it's not amazing. I wouldn't say that, but very, very respectable. And let's give her a few orbs here and see what she can do. Okay, so defensively, I'm sure she's going to be okay, especially after she supers. She's going to be getting um, an additional increase to defense right through the super attack. Okay, so first super, 1.7 million. And we're both stunning and sealing the Krillin. There is the additional super, 1.7 again. So in total, we're at 3.4 million um, attack generated this turn, right? So that's really good. That is really, really good for a non Dokkan Fest, you know, random general SSR pool unit that just got a Dokkan Awakening. Um, very, very good, especially because she also sealed and stunned the Krillin. I mean, it's kind of redundant in a way because if you think about it, if you stun the enemy, it doesn't really matter if they're sealed or not, right? Because they can't attack either way. But still, it's good to have, just in case, right? And uh, yeah, 3.4 million total attack. She does get the second super guaranteed. So unlike the launch, who we showcased yesterday, who you know has the potential to actually super up to four times, but a lot of times you're gonna be getting you know additional normal attacks. She, like this uh, Oceanus Genron, will get two supers guaranteed every single turn, sometimes three, if you have some uh, hidden potential investment, some dupes in her. So I think for my Oceanus, I went with a combination of additional and a crit. I'm pretty sure, I can check in a second, but I think I went with a combination because um, even though it makes more sense to go with, you know, mostly... Wait, what did I do again? Hold on, hold on. Let me just check. Uh, yeah, mostly additionals with six crit, as well as five dodge, which of course is from the free dupe um, part of the hidden potential system. But uh, the reason I went with mostly additional is because Obviously, she has the uh, attacks effective against all when the enemy is sealed. But I was like, you know what? We should still give her some crit because, you know, she's not always going to be getting, um, what do you call it? Uh, the seal off, right? Because not all enemies will be sealable or have the potential to be sealed. So in that case, you still want the ability to crit sometimes because you're not going to get attacks effective against all. That was my thinking. That was my logic. I do think it's sound. I know some people went with like mostly additional and then the rest to dodge, which I guess is fine too, but I'm not a huge fan of dodge 
in the hidden potential system because if you guys didn't know one dodge only equals or one dodge level only equals one percent chance to dodge right so even if you have like 20 dodge for example that's still only 20 percent so personally i don't trust it but that's just me right you guys can do whatever you want with your units um i always find it funny when people hate on me for like well, not, i want to say hate but like they tell me I'm like being dumb <laughs> when they're like, yo, you, you chose the wrong potential skills, man. You should have gone with additionals or you should have gone with crit or you should have given him three dodge or, or whatever because that's what truth likes to do. And I'm like, bro, like just do whatever you want with your units, right? Like there might be a build that maximizes damage. Sure, like dam maximizes uh, output potential, but at the same time, I mean, some people just like to play with their units a certain way, or like some people love to have more dodge because they just enjoy seeing the units dodge, and that's okay, even if it's like not the best, you know, build for damage output. Um, if that's what they want, then just let them do their thing, right? Like I never understood people's need to force their own like opinions on others or their own preferences on others. It's just like. Okay, you know what, we're going, we're going off on a big tangent. I'm gonna try to cut it off short here, but you know, uh, last night I was streaming a different game that's not Dokkan, and I got like multiple people, multiple people coming in here telling me, yo, stop playing this game, this game is trash, go play Dokkan. I'm like, yo, if you don't like the game, then just don't play it. Okay, don't, don't tell me it's trash because it's not gonna change my opinion because I like the game. Anyways, getting back to the showcase, Oceanus, Doing some good things, all right? <laughs> Man, that was a big tangent, my bad, guys. You know, sometimes um, something comes to mind, and uh, if it's something I'm passionate about, then I kind of go off track and uh, don't really pay attention to what I'm supposed to be paying attention to, which, of course, is this showcase right here. Um, Oceanus is very, very good. I would say she's not as good as the Fizz Launch Awakening, mainly because Fizz Launch... I mean, first of all, Fizz Launch can launch up to four. Whoa. I just realized, man, Fizz Launch is launching up to four super attacks. How did that never occur to me? Okay, anyways, uh, she can launch up to four super attacks, which obviously is crazy. And um, on top of that, the more important thing, in my opinion, is that launch is greatly lowering the enemy's attack and defense with every single super. So for harder events, harder enemies, um, where you know they can be debuffed, like Super Battle Road, Extreme Super Battle Road, Battlefield, etc. Um, after a couple of supers, she's basically gonna be nullifying the enemy's like ability to hurt you. You know, like if you hit them with like four supers or even three supers, their attack's gonna be so low that you're gonna be taking double digit digits for like most of the attacks, which is really really nice, right? So. As far as utility goes, I do think that um, Fizz Launch definitely has the advantage. But that being said, um, that's not to say that, you know, Oceanus is bad because she's extremely good. As you can see, getting double supers every single turn, as long as the enemy can be um, debuffed, that is, right? Like some enemies can't be debuffed, so in that case, she's definitely much worse. Right? If you're fighting an enemy that cannot be debuffed, then she's not going to be getting the additional attack and defense. She's not going to be getting the additional super. So in that case, she's going to be a pretty mediocre unit, obviously. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess in that case, in that in that way, <laughs> she's a little bit situational, but not too much. Not too much. I still think she's a phenomenal awakening. I think she's a phenomenal unit. And, um, you know, if you guys have her, then make sure to awaken her ASAP. I mean, it's really easy to farm the medals anyways from the, the Rebrianne event. Get her done, throw, throw her on our team, and hopefully she gets more categories in the future. Because like I said, man, she's only on Peppy Gods right now and uh, Shadow Dragon Saga. And nobody runs Shadow Dragon Saga. Okay, it took me forever to find a Shadow Dragon Saga friend. Actually, you know what? I never found one. All right, I had to... Uh, ask one of my friends to set their leader to phase over against Shenron because I was refreshing my friends list like going to an event leaving going to an event leaving for like I want to say 10 minutes 15 minutes before I gave up I got too frustrated I was like screw this hit up a friend yo change your lead to phase Omega Shenron so I can actually do the showcase and uh, 
now we're here but man the friend system is so broken i hate it like how hard is it for them to actually just make some adjustment like maybe it's really hard maybe i don't know maybe like you know it's much more difficult than i i would think but i, I feel like even if it's hard it's something they should definitely prioritize because it's um it, it, it's a big part of the game. Actually, it's one of the biggest parts of the game, right? Like being able to find a friendly to run a team that you want to run. Oh, we got a token attack. Okay, perfect. So let me focus here. Let's get all seven of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Okay, perfect. So 1.76 million attack this time again. Um, the Goku is still debuffed. His attack can't be debuffed, but his defense can be. And as long as we have uh, Omega Shenron on rotation, he's going to be debuffing all enemies by 20% attack and defense. So there's the additional. Hopefully we can get, get a third one because we haven't had a three or triple super attack rotation yet. Damn it. Okay. Well, look at that. 28k. Yo, I remember this Goku hit pretty freaking hard. All right. I remember this Goku was supering me for like 100k plus when I first um, attempted this stage. So... The fact that she took 28 is pretty nice, man. That That's some really nice tanking. And uh, of course, a big part of it is because every single time she supers, she's raising her uh, defense, right? At least for one turn. But like, for that one turn, she becomes quite a bit more tanky. So if she's double supering or even triple supering from time to time, then yeah, if you uh, allow her to get hit after she supers, then it's going to be a very solid amount of defense that she has and it's going to be some good tanking that you get out of her but uh, if she's getting hit before the super then she might get punished a little bit but as you saw her defense is still pretty impressive 120,000 is uh you know a, a very good amount it's nothing crazy but very very good so uh yeah just a well-rounded unit i would say good damage output good utility in terms of sealing stunning um, can get attacks effective against all if the enemy is sealed although unfortunately not all enemies can be sealed and also not all, all not all enemies can be uh, debuffed for attack or defense either right so you gotta pick your spots here you gotta see like which enemies um, you know make sense as far as like using her because if you're gonna be doing um, I think legendary Goku events I don't think any of the phases can be sealed unless I'm wrong because it's been a while actually since I've you know done a full run of that but I think none of the Goku phases can be sealed so in that case she is going to be a little bit worse and then a bunch of the phases later on can't be debuffed either right so uh yeah that's gonna be the showcase guys uh yo give me a triple super here let's end it off let's end this off right there we go okay so <laughs> there's the triple super turn and that is pretty much our uh, sign to end the showcase guys thank you so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed it let me know in the comments down below what you think about the int oceanus token awakening are you impressed by it or is it just kind of mid to you or do you think she's just okay and uh, as always if you liked the video then make sure to like the damn video and if it's your first time watching me are we gonna die oh we're dead First time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button. To join the Tiger Squad now, and while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And let me just put Oceanus on the screen there. And uh, did I say sub to the channel? I forgot. If, if I didn't, make sure to sub to the channel, join the Tiger Squad now, hit that notification bell. And uh, until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.